Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard the Pilot Lawyer Podcast. Thank you for your attention while this important legal information is reviewed. What you hear should not replace consultation with an attorney and should not be considered advice for your situation. On behalf of the Pilot Lawyer and your entire crew, it's our pleasure to have you aboard. Welcome, aviators, to the Pilot Lawyer Podcast with us, the Eisen Brothers at the Eisen Law Firm. You're here for what we do best, navigating the FAA medical certification process for pilots and those who want to become pilots. As we say around the water cooler, if you don't laugh, you cry. For the next 30 plus minutes, we hope to bring you the lighter side of what can otherwise be a frustrating process. That's an interesting antidote that you got there, Anthony. The water cooler no longer exists because we're in a new office. Isn't that exciting? (sighs) So whether you laugh at us or with us, join us brothers as we discuss the fascinating world of FAA medical certification. New surroundings in the same old boring faces. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Big fat faces. And you know, that brings us to it. Getting fatter every day. Yeah, literally. You know, by the second. That's why we had to move. (laughs) (laughs) Bigger office. Bigger Bigger space. That's true. Which brings us to an interesting anecdote. Always or twice as wide. (laughs) We're thinking about walking from Lakeland to Washington, D.C., for two purposes, two stated purposes. One, because we could use the exercise. Two, I think if we walked from Lakeland, Florida to Washington, D.C., how far is that? We looked it up. It was like a 14-day walk. That's probably 14 continuous days walking. Hey, right? let's, let's, with our metabolism, we'd gain weight during that, okay? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, like we'd be well, bigger we, at I the mean, end of it. But if you walked from Lakeland to Florida, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you walked from done. Lakeland, you should yeah, walk done. down to the... <laughs> The yeah, but if you walk there, do you think that could <laughs> mitigate against the years of uh, inactivity? inactivity? I mean, does that essentially take care of any kind of concerns anyone's well, ever had about nine, us not being active enough? 929 miles. How many foot paces? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, <you did> double. <laughs> so okay. that's the first day purpose. It's all about us, <laughs> Naturally. as the usual. And the second would be to bring, <laughs> bring awareness to the... To uh, just whatever whatever the, aviation, the, whatever aviation, aviation yeah, issue yeah. that medical certification we can attach any significance we yeah, want to it yeah yeah medical certification mental health problems and medical med- med- medical and certification aviation. process <laughs> sounds like neurological yeah, issues yeah that you yeah, might be yeah having yeah, I mean, an abiding moment so it's an interesting involved. thought it is uh, now we need to see if we can garner we can some support off. from our listener and if if more than Was two people if more than two people <laughs> Uh, express, yeah, you you fat so should do that. But you know our mom's not going to be for that. Yeah, at she's all. not. No, not no. She's, there's never a way. In there's not which enough sidewalk could, on the way. You'll yeah, be walking yeah, in yeah. traffic. Yeah. Well, <laughs> which is true. Traffic, yeah, probably. I, like I said, Google Maps. So you walked. It, so you walk. So, so let's, let's play this out. Walk with me, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> you walk to DC. Okay. What do you do when you get what, there? What, what, yeah. What do you do when you get there? Are you, you going go to you go up to Susie's office and be like, hey, Susie, uh, listen. See, well, what's, what's going to happen, though, is the, the walk itself. Are we just going to pick it outside the Federal Air Force? We're, we're not office picketing. We're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, the walk itself is going to garner the interest. We'll call ahead to like news spots like uh, you know Charlotte, Savannah. Other places. You're hitting yeah. some major outlets. Yeah, some major there. outlets. I mean, <laughs> you say, and the, and the idea is that these three fatzos are walking. Well, Alex, <laughs> who clearly since our last with... episode, Alex has lost like 50 pounds. Well, well Alex has started doing around. this. Gain it back. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll store <laughs> up like a up. bear for, for winter. Well, okay? I'm ready to go. <laughs> so I, I got enough for two walks. Yeah, so. Did we walk back or fly back? We fly, back. Again, Definitely fly back flying first back. class. First yes. class. I'm gonna need some nice I'll shoes. Be served a meal on the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you have any interest or you want to host us on the walk, because uh, we'll need a place to bed down. <laughs> Just yeah. let us know. <laughs> this so, is great. Yeah, this a, is great. Well, <laughs> it's getting more exciting as we talk about it. But, so, so there's that thought that we had. That was exciting. since our last that episode. So now that we bored everybody with how. F- Fat we are. <laughs> Miserable. That dumb idea. Yeah, the dumb idea. I don't even know how you could... Uh, I mean, we've still got to do work. In the yeah, meantime. well, we'll, we'll, we'll oh, take you know calls that, on you the You know walk. that guy I mean, that's always doing the videos with I the green rich, screen? Rich, was it a rickshaw? 
Rick Shaw. Is it Rick, is it Rick Alex, Straw or Rick Shaw? Uh, Rick Shaw. Rick Shaw. So, okay, we'll have a Rick Shaw. And one of us will pull the other one in the back of the rickshaw <laughs> while you do work, do work. take do calls work, yeah. and, and yeah. send emails. It'd be but, a tag team effort it, then. It could really blow up in our face so we could get all this, this garner all this attention and then not really make it further than like the north side of uh, town. Yeah, so that's, 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 that's also a problem. I've, <laughs> I I, I, I have a. <laughs> yeah, they're bringing all this bad attention. The, the ironic thing there is that you sprained your wrist, but you can't you walk. walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a nuance. That's joke. why I said it. In, in the night. I think the cool kids call that meta. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, tripping, bro. <laughs> all right. Whatever. So in the so. in the night, though, we'll have a security car. Advance us several miles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we're here to talk about today is failure to provide denials. Can you yes. tell me a little bit something about that, Chris? Let's take it really. Let's bring some awareness. Last to those. time we mentioned a failure to provide denial. You made a joke about me not providing for my family. Oh yeah, that's that like, did that's not go over well. Really? At the home front. That's so, not true. It was a joke. Look, look at me. Look at me. Yeah, the the mustache. Mustache. do I look like I'm I'm laughing? Yeah, the mustache is a scream for help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Raise awareness for that. Uh, so oof. so yeah, failure to provide denial. We get a lot of calls of folks of having had a failure to provide denial. They don't know what to do. We'll, we'll see it in practice quite a bit as well. And sometimes it's actually a strategic effort because essentially what it is is let's not give too much away now. Let's not give too much away. But essentially what it is is. When the FAA asks for information from you uh, as part of the medical certification process, they'll typically give you a period of time in which to provide the information, ranging from 30 to 60 to 90 days. If you don't provide the information in the allotted time or if you do provide it and they either lose it or it doesn't get scanned into the file in time for their computer system or for them to realize that they've had it in the allotted time, they'll send you what's known as a failure to provide denial where it's essentially they're saying, hey, listen, we didn't get the information that we've asked for. And as a result, we are going to deny your application for medical certification because we don't know if you're eligible to hold a medical certificate or not. So if you get a failure to provide denial, is it done for you? Are you over? Is it, is it the end of the road? Not. Absolutely not. Have now, you fallen uh, off the edge of the flat earth? Not at all. So here's how I look at it. Flat, you're a flat earther. That explains so much. So, much. Yep, I'm with you. so um, the idea is that let's say uh, somebody that's under 40, they've applied for a first class medical and their day were deferred by their AME. That application is good, for, or even if they're issued a medical certificate, they were good. It's good for five years. Like okay. I, I applied for a first class. Medical. Yeah, well, it drops down to a third class application and so on. So it's good for that application. Yeah, but that first class is only good for That's less. good for a year, but it's going to drop down to third class privileges <laughs> after a year. <laughs> so wait, you're after, telling me that even though I applied for a first class medical and I was now on a third class, that's still good for five years? That's correct. So it's still good for a year. Chris, you just learned something. So no. He's, he's being uh, he's facetious. Facetious. So I'm trying to make a point through humor and lightheartedness, sarcasm. And it's failing. It just sounds like you're learning something. So essentially, if they give you 60 days to respond to the letter, if you don't respond, they're going to say, well, hey, we never got anything from this individual, so we don't know if he or she still wants a medical certificate or not. So they're not going to hold the application open for the rest of the time. Instead, what they're going to do is they're going to send you a failure to provide denial where they say, hey, you know what, you didn't give us this stuff, so we're going to deny your application. If you were deferred by your AME, is it the end of the world? Well, no. Like I said, your application is still good for the period of time that is allotted to you under whatever class application you applied for. So in my anecdote of an individual that's under 40, applied for a first class, you know, that application is good for five years. So if you get a failure to provide denial letter after having been deferred, you can apply that, you can submit that medical information anytime you like within that five-year period and the FAA is going to look at it. So even though they've denied you, they will still review it if you send in the information. So a lot of people will get these failure to provide denial letters and they'll get panicky. 
I think that's the last. Uh, that's, that's, that's that's it. Let me ask you this I'm real quick. Oh, oh, oh. Let me ask you this. So, say you know they're asking for medical records in the facility that I go to, and they say they give you thirty days. Say the facility that I go to, they just take forever, which is known. Is that I mean, is that thirty days or bust, or do I get another opportunity here? How's that work? I can get an extension. Oh, really? FA is very generous with extensions most of the time. Are they? Yeah. And then sometimes if they get to the point where they're not willing to give an extension, then they'll say, hey, you know, we're just going to FTP, fair to provide you. And just to submit the information when you have it available. Now, there is some nuance that's very important. If you've been issued a medical certificate, say you went going to your Amy, you have this DUI situation. Your Amy issued a medical certificate and the FAA follows up within 60 days, 60 days of having been issued your medical certificate. And then the FAA sends you information request letter and you don't respond to the failure to provide and you get a failure to provide. What will happen at that point is that the FAA will actually deny your application. Your medical will actually go away. They don't have to revoke it. That's right. So it actually can just take your medical, will just go poof, it'll go away. If you get a failure to provide, if they follow up within 60 days of your application when your examination with your AME. If it's after 60 days and you're still holding a medical certificate and you do a failure, you get a failure to provide and you're holding a medical, they then have to revoke the medical certificate. And in that case, they'd have to send it over to legal and legal would have to revoke the medical certificate and then they would have to prove that you didn't provide the information. Even in that case, you could still submit the documentation before they actually revoke the medical and they would send it back into review. So it's not really the end of the world. I think the most end of the world situation, if you will, are those situations where you've been issued a medical certificate, the FAA follows up within the 60 days, and then that puts you in a spot where if you get a failure to provide, your medical certificate will just be denied. And then you won't have a medical certificate while you go through the medical certification process. Has your FAA medical certificate been denied? Are you concerned you may not be able to get a medical certificate from the FAA? Are you at risk for FAA action for failing to report your medical history appropriately? Call the pilot lawyer at 1-855-FAA-1215 to discuss your options for getting the FAA to issue your medical certificate and get you flying. We are happy to evaluate your case and discuss with you a plan for presenting your case to the AME or the FAA. Aviation law is all we do, nothing else. There is probably a third and very nuanced scenario where you are working to establish your eligibility while you hold a medical certificate, get a failure to provide, and then you have to go renew your medical certificate. Yeah, and then that's kind of a tough one. That's that's a real nuanced situation there because you're already like you have the medical. Something comes up in the interim between getting issued the medical, you bring it to the FAA's attention proactively. And they start to engage with you on determining your eligibility for, for whatever the case may be. And then during that process, you know, maybe they ask for something that you just couldn't readily obtain. It just takes a little bit longer. You didn't get an extension or whatever the case may be. They send you a failure to provide denial, which in most cases at that point, they still have to send it to legal because by that point, if it, you probably passed the 60 days from the initial issuance of the medical certificate. But let's just say you were. So... Now, lo and behold, it's time to go get a new medical. And so you go apply, see your AME. Most likely, because you have that failure to provide denial pending out there, and there's that question, even more so though, I guess you would have had that question of eligibility. So you probably were going to get deferred one way or another. But the failure to provide will pretty doesn't much force a deferral, yeah. unfortunately. Even if the AME wanted to issue it and you didn't otherwise have a flag on your file forcing a deferral. The system will force the deferral. Now, the FAA does have a regulation that guides this. Essentially, it's 67.413B, which it says, if you fail to provide the requested medical information or history or to release authorize its release, the FAA may suspend, modify, or revoke your medical certificate or, in the case of an applicant, deny the application for a medical certificate. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if the FAA does say, hey, we're going to revoke your medical, right? We're going to revoke your medical certificate because you failed to provide 
you know, this is a situation where it's been after the 60 days and they send you a letter and you do a failure to provide. In that particular case, it's going to take several months for it to matriculate through legal for them to actually revoke the medical. So you've got that time until they revoke the medical to get something in there quickly or get something in there to them to get it back into review. Because again, in our experience, once you submit something, they're going to review it. You guys keep saying send it to legal. That sounds like the only recourse would be to like, I don't know, go to the NTSB to get it resolved once it's been done. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. So once you get a revocation or a denial for failure to provide, in theory, you can appeal that to the NTSB. And, uh, you know, I don't want to deny someone their due process. And in many cases, there may be some strategic effort to do that. But otherwise... Most of the time, you just want to send in the information. Now, we'll say if they've revoked the medical for failure to provide and or they've revoked it and you're at the NTSB and you say, hey, FA lawyer, no problem. Uh, here's the documents. They're not going to just give you your medical certificate back because that very same regulation says at subsection C that if your medical certificate is suspended, modified, or revoked under paragraph B of the section, which I just read, that suspension or modification remains in effect until you provide the requested information, history, or authorization to the FAA, and until the FAA determines that you meet the medical standards set forth in this part. So where that's different, let's say you held a medical certificate. After 60 days, the FAA comes along and says, hey, you know, we want to check this out. You don't provide them the information. You get a failure to provide revocation. In that case, if you provide them the information, they're going to say, hey, listen, uh, we're not just going to give you your medical back because you gave us this, these records. Now we actually have to send it through review and you have to wait without a medical certificate until such time that we determine that you're eligible to hold a medical certificate or not. So that's factor one. If, however, you're able to get something to them before it gets to the revocation in that case, you could potentially still hold your medical certificate while it goes through the, the review process. I suppose another maybe potential benefit of going to the NTSB is if, I mean, at that point, I guess you get subpoena power, right? That's correct. So, I mean, if you're trying to obtain records from a facility and they've been giving you the runaround for whatever reason. There may be some strategic there benefit. There may be to, some uh, use it, to being in yeah. front of the NTSB because you can apply for a subpoena and then maybe have a little bit more uh, firepower behind that request if they're blowing you off. Yeah, if you went to the NTSB, you could potentially argue either A, I did provide this and the FAA lost it. That's possible. Or they didn't properly log it or whatever. Or B, you may be able to get into some argument there as to whether or not it was a reasonable request. And that's a potential argument there as well. Otherwise, I would say going to the NTSB largely is a waste of time for this particular issue because barring certain circumstances that we just discussed, so essentially providing the records to the FAA is, is the answer. The problem is people get these denial letters or they get these letters and they think that's it. They don't realize that, hey, I can just send this in and things will open right back up. They'll go right back where they were. We have it from a pretty good source that there are a lot of people appealing these failure to provide denials and revocations to the NTSB pro se essentially on their own. The source is infallible. Infallible. It's an infallible source. And I never reveal my sources. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I never stipulate anything. The only thing I wave is the American flag. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I think the fact that people get these letters and, and there's reference in there to going to the NTSB, a lot of people see the letter saying the NTSB, and they go, well, hey, that's a logical next step. But there's so much going on. Some of the things you can do if you get a failure to provide denial and you in your thought process, well, hey, I provided this already. One of the things we would recommend that you do that you get your airman medical file from the FAA. So you can es establish what does the FAA actually have and what don't they have. I think that's always a good thing to know what's going on at the FAA, what they think they have. Alex, do you have any comments on how to get the airman medical file? Yeah, that, that's your specialty, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Records. So to get your airman medical file, there is, uh, just do a Google search for airman medical file. <laughs> that's, our, <laughs> that's our advice. That's just advice. Google just it. Google it. <laughs> just Google it. Well, no, there's a specific form that needs to be completed and then um, faxed to or emailed to the FAA 
after completion and it will take a while to get, I'd say probably about, you're probably looking at two to three months at this point to get the file, depending on how big the file is. So it can be a bit of a process. So that's always a good thing. You can also contact the FAA sometimes. We're always uh, maybe not the biggest advocates for individuals that are not represented contacting the FAA and saying and doing things, especially if there's a possibility you're going to litigate this at the NTSB. You might want to be careful of that. But there is a number you can call to talk to the FAA folks and see, you know, get some, try to get some clarity as to what do they have and what don't they have. And just so you're aware out there, they do log every time you call. Every phone call. And so, the more you call, the more it could look like you have a personality disorder. And it's not necessarily that they just log that you called. They give descriptions of yeah, we've seen your cases. affect and all that. We've too, seen sometimes. cases where it's like they're, they call, they have these call logs. So if you get the airman medical file and you've called into the FAA, there are these call logs and it'll say, oh, well, you know, this person called disgruntled. You know, this person was difficult. And it's not to say that, it's not to say you can't call. There's a myth out there that, hey, I should call every... Uh, hey, your, your disgruntled demeanor may be very well-founded. Yeah, I, I, I think but, it probably is. But it ain't doing you any favors. It's not doing you favors because I we've certainly seen cases where it has been calculated into the thought process that you know when, let's say it's a mental health... Chairman case. Smith called 14 times in a two-day period and on the... Yeah, and know, he was disgruntled and we've seen cases where you know, people have threatened legal action. Not or, only not legal action, but... We've seen violence, violence threatened and, and so on. And, and that gets factored in. And, and sometimes uh, we'll see cases where uh, the FA will get concerned that the individual may have a personality disorder because that's kind of an ambiguous thing that can be sort of thrown around, unfortunately, in our opinion. And it's like, oh, well, you know, this is just a manifestation of his personality, his, his or her personality disorder because, you know, they, they've called so many times or you know, why are they so obsessive about this? Which for good reason, certainly we understand that. Uh, and I think the FAA should understand that as well. But I guess the point to be made is that you just need to be careful and tactful with it. You know, don't be calling every two seconds uh, because that will get logged and sometimes will raise an eyebrow. Sometimes it's helpful, but sometimes it's not. So we discussed failure to provide. What to do if you get one. You know, sometimes uh, the best thing, and when I say sometimes, I mean all the time. The best thing is just give us a call. We can try to get to the bottom every of what time. the issue is. And, and sometimes, you know, it is a frustrating thing. You, you want to think, hey, listen, I've sent this in, or they keep asking for the same thing. And, and it just comes down to the matter of the fact that, there yes, was, you're sending in what they've asked for, but it's not exactly not exactly what they're asking for. And some nuance as to what is needed is, is pretty important. There was a period I stepped away here. Did you mention that, like, if you get a failure to provide and you say, eh, I don't want to mess around with this right now. And then you're two years down the road, three years down the road, and you had that five-year period because you're under 40, that you could then just send in the stuff. Yes, sir. And it open so, it back up. So if you've you, got that, you already talk about if that? you're still in that period of time where that application would still technically be good, you can have at it. Now, that being said, let's say you run out that, that time clock. Just go and apply for a new medical. And that'll start the clock all over again. And the nice thing is, at that point, the FA will send you a letter with what their last request was. Anyhow, so, so that in makes case sense you to forgot, you? yeah, it makes sense to me. Well, I deal with it every day. Well, it looks like you deal with it every day. You know what? So we're gonna do that rather, longer now. Had a rather large lunch, as you well know. <laughs> and that's, I think, what probably prompted the whole idea to walk to DC. <laughs> yeah. As the lunch wears off. <laughs> Ready for dinner. <laughs> and I'm now contemplating dinner. <laughs> I don't know if the walk is really going to be worth the juices worth That's the really squeeze. Us. I'm a, I'm a, yeah. Maybe we could do something more. Like, I think it'd be more like, like, uh, like, like eating, eating contest. contest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll sponsor like a hot dog eating contest. Yeah. You know, forget Nathan's. Yeah. It's the Eisen's. <laughs> the Eisen's. We, we'll take feedback from our listener. Yeah, shut up and actually talk about important stuff. Yeah, yeah. We'll take some feedback. Stop being so flippant. Yeah. What do, you want us to do? what do you want us to do? All right. Well, that being said, you know, I, I wanted to tie it back to the regulation because, again, it's a legal process. I know some people out there take issue with it being a legal process. Um, those who aren't lawyers. Those who aren't lawyers. That's a little bit of an inside comment. And hopefully he's trying to make it an outside comment. 
but I think that's about it for this topic. It's kind of it doesn't have a lot of meat to it. Uh, we tried to give it some unlike meat. us <laughs> <laughs> more fat jokes. Plenty on the bone. We won't have anything to talk about if we lost weight. I already mentioned that Jerry Seinfeld didn't like that, right? What the self deprecation? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, was uh, what it self deprecation or was it no, digging it was at the others? Other, it was digging like at the other people. Like if I called you fat and you yeah. didn't know that you were fat, <laughs> <laughs> didn't like you. So, I guess he's probably is he a pilot? I uh, know. I don't know. Failure okay. to provide. That's that's uh, it. What more can be said? <laughs> we, they, they've said what if there you, is if to you be get said. Get one, call us. All right. Uh, I think we're rounding the corner and we're flaming out on our left engine. <laughs> so, Alex, bring it in for a landing. You got any last parting shots? No, I think you did a pretty good job of uh, summing this one up. Yeah. All right. Well, you've logged another uneventful half hour listening to the Pilot Lawyer podcast. We're serious now. You let us know if you think we should walk or. Give us some ideas. That's not just the double chin talk. talking. <laughs> yeah, <the> double chin. <laughs> double, if this double chin could talk. All right, we, we probably really should be more serious on these things. It's just so serious all day long, and then we come in here and we blow off a little steam. Is that is that okay if we blow off some steam? Jeez. All right. <laughs> hit, are you hit the button or not? Hit it. Hit it. All right. Good to talk to you soon. This is the podcastfactory.com.